welcome to the video. So as you can tell from the title, wherever it may appear on your screen, today's video is going to be a little something new for my channel. Not too different because it is still going to be vlog style, but I recently have fallen back in love with reading. And I say falling back in love with reading because when I was a kid, I was a bookworm. I'm talking like some of my favorite memories were the summers that I would just spend inside reading a new book. And I'm not sure if maybe I've just been consuming um, a large quantity of the book side of the internet, but quite frankly, it does not take much to influence me back into a hobby, especially one where I get to immerse myself in a new world and watch movies in my head that I've produced myself. So long story long, we are talking books today. Um, I also plan on making a space in my room into a like cute, reading, cozy, like book nook kind of area. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do that today or tomorrow um, because I'm still waiting on a couple pieces to come in. And with Amazon, it could come in today. It could come in at 10 o'clock tonight. It could come in tomorrow. So I'm not sure. So we'll see how that goes. But right now, I actually am going to be heading out to the bookstore. I mean, is it a book video if you don't go book shopping? Probably. But I'm going anyway because I have my eyes on the next book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. So that's what I'm doing. Let's head on out and go book shopping. All right, so I just got to Barnes & Noble. I decided to go during the day in hopes that there's not many people here so that if I do want to film, um, I don't make me and or people around me uncomfortable. So that is the goal. So I'm just putting my hair up. I don't like driving with the clip in, so I wait until I get out. All right, so let's go in and hopefully there's not too many people there. Fun fact, I've never actually been to this Barnes & Noble. I usually go to the one near my mom's house because it's bigger. So let's see, hopefully they have everything online. It's if they had stuff. Well, like stuff that I wanted. I adore this book. I just read it and I'm actually waiting for the physical copy to come in the mail, so I'm not buying that today. I don't know why, maybe this is just me. I know we're in a bookstore, but I always feel like I have to whisper like we're in a library. So I have some books in mind that I want and I could ask where they are, but that takes the fun out of the search and finding other random books. I'm gonna head to the like fantasy fiction section. Um, I can tell you something. I don't know how bookstagram, tick, book talk girlies do it because every time I go in the store and I try to film, this is shaking for my car, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know how they, they set up the camera to record themselves looking unless their Barnes and Nobles are just completely empty because I just, I feel so, oh my God, this is shaking way too much. I feel so awkward and I'm just like, setting up the camera or like wanting to set it up I'm just like don't mind me like I just love putting my phone down in random spots but that was a success this Barnes & Noble is very very small and I like it 
but at the same time I like that my mom's has like everything and it's very easy to find things so that's my takeaway from this Barnes & Noble anyway I'm heading back to the house and give you guys a little haul of the books that I have purchased this like the past like 10 ish days I've gone a little crazy. I think my book buying to reading ratio is like 40%, which is pretty good. Um, anyway, I am going to head out. It is very hot. I apologize if you hear the AC running and it's annoying, but it is very hot and I am very ridiculous and chose to wear the sweatshirt today. So it was cold this morning. It's not cold anymore. I'm waiting for the mowing to stop. It seems to come and go. He's mowing the sidewalk. Is that normal? Do people mow their sidewalks? There we go. All right, so good morning, everyone. It is the next day, and I am going to start setting up my reading spot. I guess I really shouldn't say I'm gonna start because I did start the process last night by assembling my bookcase. Um, it was not too difficult to put together. I mean, the instructions could have been a little clearer, but I am a mechanically inclined girly, so it wasn't too bad, and it didn't take me too, too long, but I am very, very happy with it. I think it looks so cute, and it's going to be perfect for this spot. The next thing I have to do, which is kind of the last of like the building process, is put in my new chair. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then we're going to start the fun part of putting everything in its place and my books in the bookshelf and decorating spin me around and around turn me upside down spin me around and around let me feel spin me again and again till i'm upside down calling again and again my name hold me tell me i'm not dreaming this basically set up before the sun goes away I'm gonna give you guys just kind of like an overview of all the shelves I'm not gonna go into detail on all the books just because at some point in this video I will be doing a haul and small book review so here is what I ended up with for now I love that I have so much more space to add so many more books to so starting at the top I have this little plant that I got from Amazon, it is fake. I wrapped fairy lights around it and I put it in a vase that I have had forever. I think I got it from Job Lot and it looks like a little sweater and I'm obsessed with it. I then have a candle and candle holder from Bath and Body Works that I got also forever ago. The first shelf, I have some of my prettier books, a little sign that I got from Michaels from their current Halloween collection. And then you guys saw me putting fairy lights around this top one. I thought it could be more like a, um, I don't know, I wanted to have it like display case like. Next up we have all the books that I have either read or are on my like upcoming TBR. And then I got these two bookends from Amazon. This one I painted, it originally looked like this but black. But I wanted the contrast, I thought it'd be nice to go from like light to dark. Here are my books that I definitely want to read sometime soon. Down here I just have a spot to put my electronics and just some like older books and books that I don't necessarily have a plan to read right away. And then the bottom is just a bunch of books from when I was younger. I just want to have them on display but I didn't need them in a spot where like you could see them right away or I needed to grab them right away. So that is the reading spot. I'm so excited with how it turned out. I definitely still have a little bit more decorating to do, but I'm very happy that this is the beginning of it. 
I really want to finish this book. I have about 50 pages left and I just have to finish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out my new little reading spot. I'm going to finish this book and then once we start talking about books, I can give you guys my little review. I'll add it to the review section rather than the currently reading section. So I'm going to finish this and then we will talk again. I'm not dreaming, home and tell me I'm not dreaming. I'm not dreaming, home and tell me I'm not dreaming. I need, I need to get the third one. You know, there's a sign at Barnes & Noble that's some, something about potatoes. Um, <laughs> it said something about reading books being like eating potato chips, you can't just eat one. And that's so stupid, because it's true. I've got thoughts. It is now the next day. I originally planned on filming this portion of the video last night, but I just ended up taking a break in between doing the bookshelf and finishing my book. And then it just got so late and I was like, I'm just gonna film this in the morning. So here we are. I am very excited because it is finally time to talk books. I, Mm, all of, this is basically a haul simply because I have purchased all of these books within the past two weeks um, but they will be falling into one of two categories the first being books that I have already read slash books that I am currently reading like right now and the second category is books that I have on my September TBR I know I'm gonna end up adding more but um, I'm keeping it simple for now. If I do end up adding more, I will put them all in the description. I'm gonna be listing every book that I talk about today down there. I'll list the name and the author. Anything actually that I have talked about, even anything that I have here that can be listed down below, in case anything tickles your fancy, I will be putting that down below as well. I am going to jump right on in. So the first books I'm going to talk about are the books that I have already read. So in hopes to keep my rambling to a minimum, I am going to try to hit four points with every book. The first being plot. I'm going to give you guys a basic overview of the book, just like, just a little taste. Uh, second is going to be my opinion and thoughts of the book while I was reading it. The third is going to be the spice level because all of these books range from like zero to like four, I think. And the last is going to be my personal ratings on the books. So first up is the book Hooked. Now I believe this story is considered a fractured fairy tale. It is based on the story of Peter Pan but it is not a retelling. It's not similar in any way, shape, or form. The only similarities it has to the original story of Peter Pan is like namesakes and some Easter eggs to the original story and the fact that Peter and Hook do not like each other and they're enemies. Other than that, um, this is not anything like the original story. This is based in modern time. There isn't a fairy island. There isn't any pirate ships. It's not similar at all. Basically the premise is that Hook is trying to get back at his enemy Peter, who I believe in the story is called Peter Michaels, which I believe comes from the brother in the original story. And in order to get back at him, he goes through his daughter Wendy 
and it's a lot of shenanigans ensue but you know now that I say that I, I wouldn't call what happens in this book shenanigans uh, because it's criminal these are criminal this is illegal a lot of illegal criminal acts then take place in this book I did not love this book um, I am somebody who typically likes retellings or the premise that this book had I was not a fan of this one in particular I wasn't keen on the writing and just the way the characters interact with each other I just I wasn't a fan of that also the FMC and the MMC I didn't love um, I just I wanted to scream at them on multiple occasions and quite frankly I don't think anybody in this book was likable at all um, maybe one character but on a whole um, most of them weren't great so yeah I'm not too crazy about it on spice level it's probably about a like a three um, to a three and a half my issue with the spice I'm somebody who I don't mind spice in a story when it continues the story it adds to the story it makes sense it's written well all of those things the maddening thing about the spice scenes in this book was they were all the same I swear I read the same scene five times I'm talking the same situation the same words everything so maybe if they were all different I'd feel differently but they weren't so that's how the spice was um, and in terms of my rating I'm gonna give this like a two simply because although I wasn't crazy about the book as a whole I was invested I had to see what happened next the idea was very interesting the concept um, and I read this all in one day so I just couldn't put it down I was hooked you might say um, but I don't think I will pick up any more books in this series and yeah I mean the back says he wants revenge but he wants her more I find after reading this book that's a very interesting quote to try to get people hooked if I'm being honest so let's move on next up is a book I actually almost didn't pick up because I'm someone who I don't typically like romance if it is like modern or 21st century I prefer a fantasy and or historical but the name of this book made me think it was a fantasy and or historical so I picked it up and then realized it certainly wasn't but the plot had intrigued me I was like why not so the book is King of Sloth it's not showing up very well because it's such a light bright cover um, this is part of the King of Sin series and the author I'm not crazy about some of her other books but I wanted to give her a shot so when I read the plot of this book it is basically the FMC her name is Sloan and she does PR she is a publicist that is hired by the MMC's family and they've been working together for many many years something happens so it ends up being like a close proximity romance and I really liked it. I liked how it was written. I liked how the characters interacted with each other. I genuinely felt that the banter between the two main characters was really good. This one is a standalone in a um, cohesive series so all the characters know each other they're connected in some way but you do not have to read all the books in order to understand one when you pick it up. For example, I started at book four and I had no issue understanding every single thing that was going on in this book. You do get a little taste of the other characters, so I definitely want to keep going with this series because of that. Um, but yeah, so this book on Spice Level was probably about a three and a half. It had probably just as many spice scenes as the last book. The difference is they were all different. They all made sense in the story. The way this spice was written is not my favorite. It made sense with the way the characters were, so I wasn't too, I wasn't like upset by it. So as a whole, I would give this book probably like a four. 
I really enjoyed it and I'm like definitely going to keep reading the other books in the series. So that was definitely a win that I did not expect. So now moving on to some of my favorite books that I've read recently. And I have two series that I actually have not finished the whole series. They are both part of a trilogy. One of them, the third book has not come out yet. The other one it has and that's what I'm going to talk about first. That is the book that I finished reading last night and the series is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. So the first book is The Namesake. It is Once Upon a Broken Heart. I just hit myself right in the eye. <laughs> and the second book which is the one I read last night is The Ballad of Never After. I loved these books. I cannot wait to get the third one. So to start the first book the premise of it is um, a girl. Her name is Evangeline. Evangeline? Evangeline? I don't really understand. I don't feel like it sounds better in my head than it does out loud when I say it. Um, but she makes a deal with a fate named Jax and she is told she shouldn't make deals with fates. Everybody knows this but she does it anyway because she feels like she's desperate in a certain situation that she's in at the current time. Jax is decently reckless but he's also very cunning and conniving. I really started liking it once it got to like the last third of the book. This book was very slow at first. It actually took me probably like two or three days to get through it um, because I just was having issues getting into it at first but this is definitely building something. This book is building the world we see, the characters, it's introducing us to everybody, introducing us to the type of magic and the type of fantasy that takes place in this series. So I appreciate it for those reasons. Once I actually got into the book, I like had to finish it right away. And it made me start the second book right away. So the second book, isn't that cover just so stinking pretty? I wish you could see it a little better, but the sun's shining kind of weird. Um, but the second book is like the meat and potatoes of the story. It is the continuation of what's going on in this book. It's still following along with Evangeline, Evangeline and Jax and all the stuff that Jax is up to. I loved this book so much. It was so good. I could not put it down. My only complaint about this book, I didn't like the ending. I was not crazy about it. I just felt kind of disappointed by the ending. So my hope is that the third book kind of makes up for it and makes me hate the ending less but we shall see um in terms of spice level these are zero there's no spice slow burn as slow as burns can be none at all and i think as a whole this book i would probably rate a three and a half to a four and this book is like a four to a four and a half I know I should just be giving like straight to the point star ratings, but that's just kind of how I feel. And I'm very, very, very excited to start the next book in the series. I've heard some like different opinions on the third book. So fingers crossed that I like it, but I guess we shall see. The last two books um, is kind of similar. They are the two first books in a series, and that series is the Assistant to the Villain series. And the plot to this book is that the main female character, Evie, is looking for a job. She needs a job to support her family, and she somehow wanders into the position of assistant to the villain of her town. It's very interesting to see how a... I, you know what the funny thing is? He's never called an evil villain. He's always just called a villain. It's just interesting to see how the office is run behind the scenes of a villain. The second book is similar to how the Once Upon a Broken Heart series was. It's really just the continuation of the first story. It's more of Evie and the villain Tristan just working together and everybody trying to work against his enemy who is the king of the land that they live in. My opinion is they always say that you will have a soft spot for the first book you read that really got you into reading again or a certain genre. And these books, um, that's what these are for me. I 
loved everything about these books. I thought they were so cute. It is exactly how I want my story to go. Um, all the characters, even the morally gray ones, even the ones that you're not necessarily supposed to like, were all very charismatic in a way that you understood how they were the way they were. And I appreciate that so much in a book. The two main characters I absolutely love. The only thing I will say is that I don't love that they keep calling the villain the villain when he has a name. Um, I don't think this is a spoiler because in the book even the villain is like how do you not know my first name? Um, but his name is Tristan and I just wish they called him Tristan more and or sir or boss. Those I don't mind. But it's just so odd that to his face they call him the villain. Um, that's my biggest complaint, which quite frankly is not really that big of a complaint to have about a book. In regards to Spice, um, fun fact, when I was going to read this book for the first time, the reason I ended up buying it digitally was because I went to buy the physical copy on Barnes & Noble of the first book and I, I wish I can find it. If I find it, I'm putting it on the screen here because I was like, after reading this book, I, somebody post it and they were like if you just want smut and spice then read this book but this was ridiculous and I was like what that plot doesn't make me think that that's what this book is about so I actually didn't end up buying the physical copy but then I read a different review and somebody was like this is such a cute sweet book and then I saw some TikToks by the author who I think is like she seems absolutely lovely and I was like I'm just gonna buy it right now. I'm gonna read it and see what happens. This book is like the most I'd ever give it on a spice scale. Maybe 0.25. Maybe. Simply because of sometimes how they think about each other. This is not a spicy book at all. Just like the other series I was talking about, this is like slow burn. The only difference in this book, which I like more, is that there's a little bit more back and forth between the main characters. It's very obvious that both of them do like each other, but there's just a lot going on, you know? Um, these are two of my favorite characters in terms of the banter they have with each other. I just find it so funny. Evie, I absolutely adore her. Out of all of these books, she's my favorite FMC. I just think she's, she's just, I love her, so. I would give this book and the first book a 4.5. Like I said, it was not perfect, so I don't feel like a 5 would make sense. But I really liked it. I liked the writing. Oh, bonus. I'm like 90% sure this author is a Swifty um, because maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm biased. I don't, I don't know. But there are so many times when they're like, what seemed like Taylor Swift Easter eggs. There was one in this book specifically, there's just no chance, no chance it was an accident. And I, I ate that up, I love it. So I ended up going out and buying the first edition of the new book. I do plan on getting the physical copy of the other book to add to my collection as a trophy, so yes. The next two books are books I'm currently reading, so I don't really have much to say about them other than the fact that I'm reading them currently. The first one is The Cruel Prince. Um, it's... I'm not very far into it. It's actually taking me a long time to get into. It just is kind of slow for me. I'm definitely going to keep going with it because people seem to love these characters and love this world. So I need to see what The Hubbubaloo is about. So I am going to finish reading it, but as of right now, I'm not super crazy about it. And next up, this is the one that I'm like, I have been having issues putting it down, and that is The Divine Rivals. When I first got this book, all I knew was that the, it was, they were writers and there was a mystical world, but the concept and premise of this book is so good. My only complaint so far is that the world it's set in is a bit confusing. Um, I feel like now that I've read more, I understand it. When you first start it, it was a bit confusing to understand like what the magic was here. But once you get into it, uh, it is very good. And I'm about 50% through with this book and I cannot finish 
I cannot finish. No, I will finish. I cannot wait to finish it. I'm actually probably going to finish it tonight because why not? So moving on to our next category. These are all the books that I have planned for my September TBR. Like I said, I probably will end up adding more, but this will be my start. And I have three that are physical copies. And then I have two books that I do not own yet, but I plan on purchasing. So the first book is The King of Wrath. This is the first book in the King of Sin series. This book was actually another one that when I first read it seemed interesting to me, but I decided to go with the sloth one first. But people seem to love this one, and I've heard that this is people's favorite couple out of the entire series. So this was like a definite, like had to add it to my list. Next up is The Witch Collector. This one was also recommended as a like, villain gets the girl kind of trope um and also anything that has to do with witches i love so this is based on a girl whose sister is taken by the witch collector and the witch collector like works for a higher evil or something and eventually she has to stop trying to go after the witch collector and start working with him um i don't fully know but i know that this is always on people's like must reads. They loved it, like almost five stars. So I just knew that I had to, it had to be next up. So last in my physical copies is the book that has been talked about so, so much. I'm pretty sure on Goodreads, it's like a 4.9. And I chose not to get it at first because I don't know, I didn't love the cover, but then I saw this different edition of it. And I was like, that's it. I'm gonna get it. Everyone loves it. My only concern is that I was watching somebody online whose opinion I find are very similar to mine. She DNF'd it. And the description of what she was giving made me think like, oh no, I don't know if I'm gonna like this book. But I am gonna give it a shot because one, I purchased it. Um, and two, so many people like it. I just have to see for myself. And that is the book Quicksilver. The only thing on the back of this one is do not touch the sword, do not turn the key. Do not open the gate. Um, I believe this is about a girl who opens a gate to like a different place. I just know that it's a fantasy. People love it and it's very long. How long is this book? It's like 600 pages. So I just hope I like 600 pages worth of this book, but I'm very concerned that I will not. The last two books that I have on my TBR, you might guess one, and that is the next in the series of the Once Upon a Broken Heart. I have to get it. I need to get it. I need to finish it. I need to have it in my hands. So for obvious reasons, that is on the list. And the last book that I plan on getting is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have actually already read the first book. And I have started the second book. I didn't end up talking about them like in depth today because I don't have them. Um, I left them at my mom's house and I was like, I have so many books to talk about. It's fine. Um, but maybe when I talk about the third book, which I do plan on buying, um, maybe I'll give you guys my opinions on the first two after that. But the third one in the series, I believe is Escaping Houdini. And these books follow a girl named Audrey Rose who wants to work in forensic and she's being trained by her uncle to do, um, what is the word I'm thinking of? This word keeps escaping me every time I think and talk about this book to somebody. Autopsies. And it's very interesting because it is set in Victorian London. Her and the MMC, his name is Thomas Cressley. They are both in this line of work. Obviously, it's easier for him to be in it than her. It is frowned upon, especially since she's from like higher society to a degree. So yeah, so far, um, I'm, I like the series. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it's very entertaining. And I do really like the main characters. So I am going to keep going on with that. And that is another book that I have on my list to get to in the month of September. All right, so that is gonna do it for today. I feel like I've spent a million years just talking at the camera, but hopefully it's entertaining in some way. I love talking about books, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I am more than happy to do more book videos and I actually think I definitely plan on doing more book videos. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I'm going to be doing more book videos, but I also have a lot of Disney content coming up. Um, I do have a Disney trip coming up, so I cannot wait to share that with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like this video so I know that you liked it. And yeah, so thank you guys again for the millionth time for watching, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye! Oh,